So two decades ago, Elon founded SpaceX in South Bay, California, an aerospace hub that was in decline at that time. Using the proceeds from the sale of PayPal, he transformed the company into a $210 billion conglomerate, helping to revive the entire industry. However, Elon recently made a rather shocking announcement that's left California's governments and officials reeling. He revealed plans to relocate SpaceX's headquarters to Texas, where the company is building Starship rockets for missions to the moon and Mars. So, what are the economic and political implications of SpaceX's move out of California? And why is Texas rapidly becoming a prime destination that's attracting even more businesses? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. All right, so earlier this year, Cali Gov Gavin Newsom signed a law regarding transgender children. Elon announced that SpaceX would be leaving Hawthorne, California. He later followed that up by posting, and XHQ will move to Austin. Elon's decision to relocate SpaceX headquarters marks a pivotal shift. While the new gender identity law is seen as the last straw, it wasn't the only reason behind this move. Musk had long felt California no longer aligned with his vision for rapid innovation and growth. The state's increasingly stringent policies has constrained the fast-paced development that Musk wanted for his projects. Although California made considerable efforts to persuade SpaceX to stay local, such as in 2012 when the city of Hawthorne approved a deal to cap SpaceX's annual business license fee at $260,000, this arrangement essentially allowed SpaceX to maintain a fixed tax rate, even as the company continued to grow. Now, typically, these fees are calculated based on gross tax receipts, meaning the more money a company generates, the higher the fees. However, that agreement was set to last only until 2022, and it's not clear if it's still in effect today. City leaders at the time cited the deal as a way to incentivize SpaceX, which was already fielding offers to move to other states like Texas and Florida, to stay in Hawthorne, California. Hawthorne also agreed to reduce building and planning fees by 75% of the normal cost for SpaceX should the company decide to expand its local facilities there. But in the end, none of this could stop Elon from deciding to make the move. So, what impact will the departure of this aerospace giant have on California and Texas? The relocation of SpaceX and X's headquarters from California to Texas marks a significant shift that could reshape the economic and technological landscape of both states. The move may signal a potential downturn for California's long-standing aerospace industry. SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, a sprawling one-million-square-foot campus, is not only the workplace for top management, but also the production site for Falcon and Dragon spacecraft, both of which have been pivotal in the company's success. According to a financial report from Hawthorne for the 2022 fiscal year, SpaceX gives nearly 7,000 jobs. That's about 16% of the total employment. SpaceX has been Hawthorne's biggest employer, at least since 2015's fiscal year, the first time the city began including company employment levels in their annual reports. SpaceX has been an integral part of our community, Vargas, the Hawthorne mayor said, contributing to our local economy and helping establish Hawthorne as a hub of technological innovation. Thus, the departure of SpaceX's headquarters could slow the whole state's development. California stands to lose a bunch of jobs. Additionally, certain growth areas tied to aerospace and space exploration, like talent recruitment or the direction of startups that previously relied on the allure of SpaceX for investment and collaboration, may be shifting. However, it's important to note that critical SpaceX ops are expected to stay in California, particularly Hawthorne, where the company's established deep roots. Production facilities for key space vehicles and mission control will likely continue functioning there, meaning that while headquarters have moved, California will still retain at least some of the essential operations, keeping a portion of the talent and economic benefits inside the state. Nevertheless, the relocation of HQ could diminish Cali's standing as the epicenter of new space ventures, especially if other related companies or talent follow SpaceX out to Texas. This move is part of a bigger pattern for Elon, who's been shifting his business ops to Texas. On top of SpaceX and the X platform, Musk previously moved Tesla's headquarters to Austin back in 2021. He also switched his official business registration from Delaware to Texas following legal disputes and moved his neurotechnology company from Delaware to Florida. These moves reflect Musk's preferences for states with a more business-friendly environment and less regulatory oversight, as well as his growing frustration with California's policies. For Texas, the move represents a major win in its ongoing efforts to attract high-tech industries and innovation-driven businesses. Texas has long positioning itself as a new hub for tech growth. Cities like Austin and Houston are emerging as centers for cutting-edge technologies from AI and space exploration to EVs. 
Governor Greg Abbott and other Texas leaders have celebrated Elon's decision to relocate parts of his empire to the state, seeing it as further proof that Texas is becoming a major player in the future of space exploration and technology. In particular, the influx of high-paying jobs related to space tech, aerospace engineering, and high-tech manufacturing could bring major economic benefits to Texas. Texas, already home to SpaceX's Starbase, Gigafactory, and other Elon-related ventures, will likely see even more investment in infrastructure, workforce development, and supportive services, boosting both the local economy and the state's national and international profile as a leader in innovation. The broader national implications of this move could also be significant. With SpaceX and X solidifying their presence in Texas, other technology and aerospace companies might follow, drawn by the increasing concentration of talent, resources, and opportunities. This trend could accelerate a geological shift in the U.S. tech landscape, with the southern and western regions, particularly Texas, emerging as new focal points for space exploration and tech innovation, potentially rivaling traditional centers like Silicon Valley. So, what makes Texas so attractive to Elon? Musk's attraction to Texas stems from a combination of personal preferences and strategic business considerations. The state offers a unique blend of advantages that align well with Elon's vision and the needs of his various enterprises. One of the primary draws for Musk is Texas's political climate. The state's conservative leanings and less restrictive regulatory environment resonate with Elon's libertarian-leaning views. This alignment stands in stark contrast to California's more stringent regulations, which Elon's openly criticized. The political atmosphere in Texas provides a more hospitable environment for its business ops and its personal ideologies. The financial benefits of operating in Texas are also substantial. The state's lack of personal income tax is quite appealing for high-net-worth individuals like Elon. Plus, Texas gives lower corporate tax rates and various incentives for businesses, especially in tech and manufacturing. These advantages translate to savings for Elon's companies and potentially higher returns for shareholders. Texas is renowned for their business-friendly policies. The state's government approach to economic development includes fewer regulations, streamlined permitting, and more flexible labor. That environment makes things easier for Elon to launch new initiatives, expand existing ones, and adapt to changing market conditions with greater agility. The cost of living in Texas, particularly compared to Silicon Valley, is way lower. This factor not only benefits Elon personally, but also his employees. Lower costs of living lead to reduced labor expenses for companies, potentially making them more competitive. Texas's vast land resources are another advantage. The state offers ample space for big-scale operations like Gigafactory and testing facilities for SpaceX. The availability of expansive open areas is particularly beneficial for testing and development of large manufacturing plants, aligning perfectly with Elon's industrial needs. The energy infrastructure in Texas is robust, befitting its status as the leading energy-producing state in the U.S. This well-developed sector is particularly relevant for Tesla's energy division and SpaceX's operations, which require significant power sources. Strategically, Texas offers an ideal location for Elon's business interests. Its central position in the country is advantageous for Tesla's distribution network. The Gulf Coast provides crucial access for SpaceX's launch ops, and Texas boasts major transportation hubs, facilitating efficient logistics for all Elon's ventures. The Lone Star State's been increasingly attracting tech talent from across the country. Cities like Austin have burgeoning tech scenes, providing a skilled workforce essential for Elon's projects. The growing pool of talent ensures that his companies can access the human capital necessary for continued growth and innovation. Government support in Texas has been notably strong for Elon. State and local authorities have given various incentives and expedited approvals for his ventures, showing a commitment to attracting and retaining high-profile businesses and entrepreneurs. By consolidating his major companies in Texas, Elon can simplify operations and potentially create synergies between his different enterprises. This consolidation can lead to shared resources, streamlined management, and more efficient operations. Texas's rich history in aerospace, particularly with Johnson Space Center in Houston, aligns well with Elon's vision for space exploration. This cultural fit extends beyond just the aerospace sector, encompassing a general ethos of innovation and frontier spirit that resonates with Elon's ambitions. Lastly, Elon's expressed a personal affinity for Texas, its culture, and the people. While this may seem less significant from a business standpoint, 
Personal preferences also play a big role in the decision-making process of entrepreneur-led companies. California might have just become a place where no business should remain, especially SpaceX. Now, that may sound like an exaggeration, but in reality, certain government parts here have gotten so politicized that they disregard the interests of the entire country. Perhaps California still sees itself as the economic center of the U.S. with various industries and feels it doesn't need SpaceX. So, what did California's government just do with SpaceX and Elon? What's the true intention behind this government action? Last week was a mixed week of success and failure for Elon. On Sunday, he celebrated the successful test flight of SpaceX's Starship rocket. But days later, California's Coastal Commission, the CCC, rejected plans to increase rocket launches from California's coast. This led to a lawsuit by Elon in response to the CCC's opposition, in which he also is asking the court to bar the C from regulating the launch program. Falcon 9's rocket launch program has been enthusiastically supported by Space Force. In September, the agency proposed that SpaceX be allowed to increase its annual rocket launches at the Vandenberg Space Force Base, a military base on the coast near Santa Barbara in California from 36 to 50. SpaceX also does commercial launches from this base to send their Starlink satellites into orbit. Of course, both of which assured that their respective organizations would closely monitor the impacts of rocket launches that might have on the nearby wildlife. The CCC's official duties include overseeing plans and regulating the use of land and water in the coastal zone. However, by their own admission, the decision to reject Falcon 9 program appears to be less about wildlife concerns and more about Musk's personal political opinions. Committee members voted 6-4 to four against increasing the number of launches. Citing a reason for their objection, Commission Chair Carol Hart stated, we're dealing with a company, the head of which has aggressively injected himself into the presidential race. Commissioner Gretchen Newsom added, Elon Musk is hopping about the country, spewing and tweeting political falsehoods and attacking FEMA while claiming his desire to help hurricane victims with free Starlink access. Commissioner Mike Wilson piled on the anti-Musk rhetoric, saying of SpaceX, the company's owned by the richest person in the world with direct control of what could be the most expansive communication system on the planet. Just last week, that person was talking about political retribution. Wilson's choice to use the term political retribution seems like an odd choice of words. After all, is the CCC not engaging in political retribution by Elon by rejecting his plans based on his political beliefs? Prior to the CCC's decision, there was some debate as to whether the Commission should have any say in the Falcon 9 plans at all. Vandenberg Space Force Base contracts with SpaceX because the rocket launches provide useful information that aid the military. Now, considering the relationship between SpaceX and the military, this should classify Falcon 9's program as federal and thus not subject to the CCC regulatory discretion, as Space Force officials are arguing. The only obligation the military has to the CCC in this instance is to agree to mitigate the effects on wildlife, which it's already agreed to do. The commission has repeatedly argued against the military, asserting that because Falcon 9 also serves Elon's own ends, it's a private activity and falls under their authority. Now, it'd be one thing if the CCC had any substantial and legitimate concerns about the coast's environment that haven't already been addressed by the Air Force and Space Force, but their decision seems to be rooted in disdain for Elon's comments on social media, which are completely irrelevant to Falcon 9. This has indeed not only affected SpaceX, but also the economy of the state of California. It's undeniable that California is one of the economic hubs of the United States. When we look at it, we might think that just leaving Tesla RX, especially SpaceX, won't really change the market there. However, in reality, SpaceX has brought a lot more to California than we realize. As one of the most prominent private space companies in the world, SpaceX has maintained their primary operations inside California, bringing numerous benefits to the state. The company's headquarters and main manufacturing facilities are located in Hawthorne, California, and the LA metropolitan area. This strategic placement has created a substantial economic impact on the region. SpaceX employs thousands of workers in high-skilled positions, ranging from aerospace engineering to advanced manufacturing, while fostering a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship that extends far beyond the space sector, contributing to California's reputation as a hub for technological innovation and skilled labor. Cali's economy benefits directly from SpaceX's presence through job creation, tax revenue, and the stimulation of local businesses. The company's operations have led to the growth of a robust supply chain inside the state, 
Many suppliers and contractors based in California support SpaceX's ambitious projects. SpaceX's ops in California have also led to increased collaborations with educational institutions and research facilities in the state. These partners have helped promote STEM education and advanced space research, ensuring that California stays at the forefront of technological advancement and maintains a pipeline of skilled workers for the future. So, we can see that the absence of SpaceX in California would make the region feel quite bleak, and the value that SpaceX brings is something that other businesses might not be able to replicate. Looking further, it seems that the California government is trying to punish Elon by attacking his company. They dislike Musk because of his outspoken nature and his ability to reveal uncomfortable truths. This has led to the perception that Elon is not particularly supported by government officials. However, Musk's decision to sue the CCC, along with plans for SpaceX to potentially move out of California, comes with many reasons behind it. Elon's volatile relationship with California has been quite storied. The tech tycoon launched SpaceX back in 2002 in Hawthorne, a city in the L.A. metropolitan area, and enjoyed a number of tax breaks and incentives over the years, including more than $3.2 billion in direct and indirect California subsidies and favorable tweaks to market mechanisms since 2009, according to statistics from Governor Gavin Newsom's office. However symbolic, the move is likely to reignite the perennial discussion about San Francisco's doom loop, the idea that the city by the bay is trapped in an unstoppable decline. With its 800,000-square-foot headquarters located in downtown San Francisco, X was one of the last remaining companies with substantial facilities in the area. Since 2019, the 20 largest tech firms have slashed the amount of office space rented in downtown San Francisco by half. Just last month, Twitter began seeking subleases for its offices. San Francisco's downtown has been attempting to reverse urban blight for about 15 years. X, formerly known as Twitter, previously benefited from a tax break enacted in 2011 meant to attract companies to the mid-market area of San Fran, which has long struggled economically. The law was sunsetted in 2019, and the X headquarters departure could represent yet another blow to the area, where 46% of offices and 40% of retail spaces are vacant. Other companies that have left or downsized their operations in San Francisco since 2021 include Meta, Salesforce, Snap, Lyft, Block, Airbnb, and PayPal. Many employees and customers of Musk-owned companies will inevitably remain in California, making these moves more symbolic in effect than practical experts say. Musk previously relocated the headquarters of Tesla, his electric car company, from California to Texas in response to the Golden State's coronavirus measures, which he called fascist as he clashed with regulators about keeping his facilities open in spite of the pandemic. Today, though, multiple Tesla factories are still in California, including one of its largest manufacturing sites, the Gigafactory in Fremont. As long as these companies still have an economic presence in California, the state will still have an effect on them, said Eric Talley, professor at corporate law at Columbia Law School. If you want to completely seal yourself off from the state, you would need to not only move your headquarters, but also stop making sales and stop manufacturing in California. And I doubt that's going to happen. How exactly the changes play out could be more pronounced for SpaceX and X than it could be for other tech firms, as Elon has been quite adamant about employees returning to in-person work. After acquiring X back in 2022, Musk ordered almost all his employees to return to the office full-time, demanding that they be extremely hardcore. SpaceX, likewise, has an in-office mandate for employees. Musk's announcement and targeting of Newsom on X sparked a back-and-forth between the executive and the California governor, who tweeted, you bent the knee, implying Musk had pledged his loyalty to Trump. Musk then responded, you never get off your knees. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time.